The High Court in Kerugoya today threw out an election petition challenging the election of Anwe Guru as governor of Kirinyaga. Lady Justice Lucy Gitari called Martha Guru's petition fatally defective, hopeless and incurable after finding that the now Kenya leader failed to comply with election parliamentary and county petition rules 2017. On 17th October, the former Devolution Cabinet Secretary Anwe Guru applied to have that petition dismissed for being incompetent and in bad law. But Karua had challenged that, maintaining that her petition had been duly filed and had a prima facie case established. Karua argued that Waiguru's application was an abuse of the court process. It is a stunning development in the courts for Martha Karua, who is a former justice minister in the government of President Mwai Kibaki and is no stranger to the courts of justice, being an advocate herself. We have a lot to discuss, people. So, shall we get this show on the road? Let's do that. The court today found that Karua had omitted the disputed election results. The memos were unlawfully and illegally obtained. This is a procedural technicality. The instant application is hereby dismissed. The constitution has been abused and infringed on. We have more than 19 million Kenyans. If we allow everybody, we will not move. Is this the election then the constitution anticipates? The intimidation and the violence, in our view, were both from state as well as non-state actors. The team that presents this petition represents the new Kenya against the old. Against the old? <laughs> yes. <laughs> against the old Kenya. And this is the new show. My name is Larry Medo. Welcome to Sidebar. My guest tonight, the NAC Kenya leader, Martha Karua. Thank you for coming on tonight. Welcome. We have to start with what's in the news. The High Court threw out your election petition against Anwe Guru. Yeah. You believe that was in error? I believe that the judgment was in error. It failed to appreciate the law, the authorities, and for that reason, we'll be filing an appeal tomorrow. The first step to an appeal is a notice of appeal, and that's what we'll be doing, filing a notice of appeal. Yes. Let's go back to the election itself. Yeah. The IEBC says um, the governor, Anwar Guru, got 161,303 votes yeah. and you got 122,091 votes. Yes. Why do you dispute that? Because we know as a matter of fact, 48,000 votes were added to her tally. And that is pleaded in my petition. And nothing would be better than getting to the hearing and getting the ballot boxes opened and getting to the bottom of that. I think it's time in this country that we got to the bottom of electoral fraud. And it's a matter of public importance that where electoral fraud is alleged, the court should hear the case on merit. It is important that those who get to office get so through the will of the people not by means of tricks. And it is equally important that cases are, had, um, um, are determined on merit, not on tricks or technicalities, if you like. How is it possible that Anwe Guru had 48,000 votes added to her? She was not the IABC. That is why in every petition you sue the IABC. You see? But we also know that those who get IABC and its employees to violate the electoral rules and codes are the players in the elections. It is the candidates, their supporters, and others. That is why there must be that link, IEBC and the person against whom you complain. That is why Angi Oeguru is just the third respondent in your suit. The IEBC is yeah, the, the first. Yeah, the IEBC one. is the first and then the returning officer. And if you look at all petitions, that's the way it goes. This ruling should have come down yesterday. How did it happen? How did it get moved to today? It was for yesterday. When we went to court, the judge said she was not ready. They were still typing it. You don't question the court. And it was stood over to today. And just like I was mentioning in court, I, was, I made an, an observation. I sort of was thinking aloud, talking my thoughts, that uh, yesterday in court, we had a few press people the third respondent, Anwe Guru, has never come to court any one day. And yesterday there were not many people in court. 
Today there was a battery of journalists, meaning somebody uh, had done the legwork. Journalists from even beyond Kirugoya, and uh, outside there was a noisy crowd. As the judge was reading, you could hear noise outside. So I just um, posted to the court that um, the questions that will go in my mind, and I think as an officer of the court I have a duty to bring them, is that yesterday when the ruling was due, this is, was not the situation. Today I'm seeing a lot of people obviously brought by the third respondent, and we had our way of knowing uh, about that, and uh, ready for a celebration party. So I just posted the question that will linger in my mind and in the minds of others. Might it be that some parties in court knew of the content of the ruling? It's just a question I post. Petitions don't have a high success rate. So far, after the August 8th election, 11 petitions have been dismissed. Yeah. So why does yours stand a chance? Every petition has its own peculiarities. Just like you say 11 have been dismissed, mm -hmm. very many others have been upheld. I am dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. And the law allows me, if I'm dissatisfied, to go up the appeal later. And therefore, I'm going to the Court of Appeal. I'm just and my petition on substance, it's heavy. I just had um, this particular station reviewing the allegations. It's mm -hmm. not just the 48,000 votes. It's bribery. It's many other electoral offenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the things the IBC was very proud of after the 2013 election was the very small majority, a small minority of petitions that were upheld. They had 188 then, and maybe less than 10% ended up in by-elections. In this case, they have slightly more petitions this time, 277, yeah. and so far 11 have been dismissed. I think it's time we reviewed the electoral law. The election commission is a public body. They are the ones who carry out the elections. Once a prima facie case is laid out, a complaint of irregularities. It is the electoral commission and not the litigants mm -hmm. who must show that they actually conducted it within the law. And being a public body and the constitution uh, obligating them and the Access to Information Act, they must be forthright in producing the information a litigant needs. I had just obtained an order from the same court on the 23rd of October to uh, limited read-only access to the Kim's kit, to form 37 A's and B's, certified copies of those forms, and access to the originals to compare. We undertook that exercise at the IABC offices last week, and I raised it with the court. The deputy registrar of that court had not yet filed the report, yet he was supposed to file it yesterday. Now, for purposes of appeal, it is important that everything that was done before becomes part of the record of appeal. Even that, as far as I'm concerned, is an, in a, an irregularity, which will go into the complaint to the Court of Appeal. Why are you contesting the election of Anwe Guru? You both supported President Uhuru Kenyatta, yeah. and he didn't support either of you. Yeah. So now that she has won, shouldn't you work with her and move on? Work with her like if I'm dissatisfied, Supporting Kenyatta is not the same as supporting Anwai Guru. Anwai Guru was my opponent, just like the other. So if I'm dissatisfied, I go to court. Supporting Kenyatta has nothing to do with her. I didn't support Jubilee and Mas. Jubilee were my opponents. At that level, at gubernatorial, we also had candidates at um, MCA level and MP level. So. I had talked of friendly fire. I have nothing to do with Anwai Goro. I supported President Kenyatta. Yeah. And therefore, if I'm dissatisfied, I go to court. And when I exhaust my right to appeal, irrespective of the verdict, I'll be content. Let's go back to the campaign, because you yeah. famously were together at a, at a rally by President Kenyatta, and yeah. he didn't pick one side. Yeah. Do you think he should have supported you over her? No. I didn't seek to be supported. I can support myself and mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people say the fact that you are not within the Jubilee Party is why you lost. If you had been inside Jubilee Party, you had, you'd have, but you had stood a higher chance. But then why should I be in Jubilee if I don't want to be in Jubilee? 
I spent my youth fighting for multi-party. I must defend multi-party until the end of it. I can't leave to my children and grandchildren a country that is less democratic. Having spent my life fighting for it, I'm exercising my democratic right and my legal right to pursue justice. And I have exercised my right to remain in a political party of choice. I do not support everything about Jubilee. I supported a Jubilee candidate for president, Uhuru Kenyatta. That does not mean support for the entire Jubilee brigade, if you like, with or without uniform. Your support of President Kenyatta was seen to be odd because just months before you decamped, you were yeah. at a lot of, um, you were, I guess, um, your minds were together. You and NASA, you were at a lot of uh, events that NASA also attended. You at the press conferences together, you did yeah. events together. Yeah. People assumed you were in NASA. It was a wrong assumption because we kept on saying NAC Kenya was a distinct party and still remains, but were friends of COD. It's not even NASA. It was NASA. COD, yes, at the time. We were friends of COD. We did things together, but we still carried on our business as a party. Come election time, realignment took us, and we weighed our options and we did realignment. I must say it was a very costly <laughs> realignment, but we chose it that way. And initially, it was not the whole party. If you remember my initial statements, I said the party has given freedom to its members to support whichever candidate they like. Initially, it was a personal choice, which coincided with many within the party. So towards the end of it, the party actually made a resolution, a unanimous resolution to support President Kenyatta. Why do you say it was a costly realignment? That's for another day. Did you have this realignment because you'd have had a much harder case running in Kirinyaga as a code affiliated party? I said this, that uh, I have worked, I worked with both the opposition and I worked with the president and his troops towards the end. And I know both sides well because I've worked with them before even under Kibaki. And I therefore made a conscious choice and I will not go beyond that. Yeah. All right, let's yes. leave it there just for the moment. Hang yeah. on, before actually I go to break, yeah. you mentioned the electoral fraud which you don't want to endorse. Did yeah. this electoral fraud only affect the Kirinyaga governor election or did it go beyond that? I think it has happened almost everywhere in the country. My experience of 207 and the Kriegler report, which was an in-depth analysis of what went on and which find, found that there was widespread cheating by both ODM at that time and PNU, you know? And that is what is repeated in every election. Right now, there is hearing going on in Kisumu, the gubernatorial election, right. and even CIA. The details coming out should tell you that cheating is not a thing that happens in one political party. Mm -hmm. As a nation, very many people have adopted cheating as a means of acquiring political uh, leadership and political power. I've had four successful elections, two unsuccessful, one for governor, the other one for president. Mm -hmm. But I pride myself, four successful elections, and I did not have any one single time deliberately fail to obey the electoral rules and procedures. And even this time, there was an oblique invitation to go that way. And I said, I've won before without having to offend the rules. And I'll win without offending the rules. And I believe I won and I was cheated of my victory. And in case I didn't win, if we had to go on and count and find that I didn't win, I would be satisfied and I would congratulate the winner. But I'm not going to endorse fraud. You got this invitation to cheat from whom? I will not go into that. All right. But everybody, it was an open secret that somehow votes will be added at some stage. And even those who went for certain trainings, which I will not name, knew that there will be electoral fraud at that time. So it is an open secret. So my going to court, it's not because I have to be governor. I don't have to be. If you look at me, I'm in court with a petition, but I'm relaxed. 
I'm not bitter about not being governor, but I must follow my rights and not endorse electoral fraud. Yeah. I have to take a break, but stay with me because I want to talk about the moment we find ourselves in as a nation and uh, your legal mind. I want to pick that just a little bit. Yeah. But first, a really quick break on sidebar. I'm looking at your responses and I'll put some of them to Martha when we come back. Stick around, will you? Yeah. Welcome back to sidebar. I'm still sitting here with Martha Karua, the NAC Kenya leader who reigned for governor in Kirinyaga. And she says she will not support an electoral fraud. Some people find that odd because to those who supported Raila Odinga in 2007, they see that you supported an electoral fraud in 2007 and now it has happened to you. But for you as an anchor, is supporting a candidate electoral fraud? It's called choice. And as a newsman and as a station, you must help Kenyans to unpackage that supporting a candidate of your choice is never wrong. What that candidate does could be the wrong thing. What matters is whether you yourself have been involved in the malpractice. I was Kibaki's unapologetic up to today supporter, and I was his unapologetic agent at KICC. There but you are. Was, this is 29th yes, December 2007. I was neither the referee, I wasn't Kiboito, I was just an agent, just like Orengo was an agent for Raila. Mm -hmm. Is it right to imagine? that Raila was entitled to an agent and Kibaki was not entitled. I went there as an agent for Kibaki. And I was asserting myself in a room packed with Raila's supporters. Kibaki's supporters were scarce. And all I was saying, and you can play that out loudly, is that the election will be won by votes, not by shouting. I wanted us to give the Electoral Commission a chance to announce, and anybody unhappy goes to court. I have gone to court against Anu Waigoro because I'm unhappy. So I practice what I preach. Do you believe that Mwai Kibaki won the 2007 election? Yes. Krigler said it was impossible to tell who won the election. Yeah, after, the, after he did his, uh, his, what shall I say, investigations, mm -hmm. and he found widespread inflation of ballots in both ODM and PNU strongholds. Kirinyaka was not one of them. You see, my hands are clean. Whoever exaggerated, there were MPs whose seats were nullified on both sides, on PNU and on ODM. And there were many whose seats were not nullified because nobody petitioned. That's why not petitioning when you know there is an irregularity is actually abetting electoral fraud. I remember, because I was here at this KICC when you were defending President K Kibaki then as yeah. his agent, and you refused for a, a, a small audit of the constituencies, and you insisted if you're going to audit, let's have all 210 of them audited, so, not selectively. Yes, so that we can be sure I was offering more than was being demanded. Mm -hmm. And we spent the night at KICC with Orenko and Karori Omodi on one side, myself and George <coughs> Nyamwea on the other side, we went through all the files that were available. You see? And that's where we found in one stronghold of ODM, that is um, the former Chepalungu, mm -hmm. which was then Isaac Ruto's constituency. They had posted that Raila had three, 437,000 votes. The total population of Chepalungu was not even 200,000. But at that time, because I did not know for a fact that there was an exaggeration of ballots, it was explained as a typographical error, and we accepted it. Only later to learn that actually it was not a typo, and all those votes had been counted as 437. I'm just giving an example. So that night exercise was important and it was important to audit each file. How do you then come yeah. from, William Ruto at the time was on the other side, he was yeah. with Raila Odinga, and was a strong supporter of Raila Odinga, yeah. and therefore your opponent at the time. Yeah. How do you come back 10 years later and now support the party in which William Ruto is deputy president? I said this. They support the candidate for whom William Ruto is his deputy? Yes, I was supporting, my support was basically for President Uhuru. And yes, I knew his deputy was William Ruto. So you did not support William Ruto in the last election? No, I supported a ticket which had two people. But my support, main support, was to President uh, Kenyatta. 
And once you support a candidate, it's like a governor ticket. You support both. There are many people, even when we were running for governor, who would say, what about your deputy? And maybe there are those who could tell my deputy, what about your governor? Mm -hmm. But if you really want to support that person, you support both. Yeah. In 2022, if this election is upheld, yeah. then in 2022, uh, William Ruto intends to run for president. Will you support him then? No. Why not? It's choice. It's called choice in democracy. Yeah. And I'm being very upfront. I, won't, I will not support him. And I think that part of the fraud in the elections, this, uh, in the general elections, has been perpetrated as a foundation for use in 2022. So in Kenya, if we do not address the issue of electoral fraud in the August 8, 2017 general elections, we have laid a basis for people to be able to elect themselves through computer in 2022. So this is not about me being governor or the next person is a collective thing for Kenyans that we need to address electoral fraud. And I've said it's not about Jubilee or about ODM. Both sides rig at different places. And quite a number of people in Kenya have accepted electoral fraud as a means of getting into power. We need to address this, otherwise it will eat up our nation. The only declared, at least the strongest candidate so far for the 2022 election is uh, the Deputy President William Bruto. So are you laying some of the blame Be because on him? He, because he is incumbent. Moy was yes. incumbent and was defeated. That time Uhuru was his project. So incumbency does not guarantee. Mugambe was incumbent until yesterday. Lots of things happen in politics. And those who want to see stability in Kenya and I am very careful, I'm not accusing any one side of monopoly, but the side that is in power obviously has more muscle to do things on a more larger scale than those not in power. We thought we had addressed electoral fraud through the Krigra report. We have not. Because the moment we failed to properly implement our constitution, chapter six and all, trivialized certain sections, including the gender section. The moment you disobey one piece, you will find it easy to disobey another. I think we need to rein in on impunity and on electoral fraud. And the way I've, I'm seeing in this country, dissent has currently been criminalized. That if I'm from Mount Kenya and I'm saying there should be dialogue, it becomes a criminal offense. A lot of people speak in whispers. I have lived through the Moi regime, I've lived through Kebaki regime, and now the Uhuru regime. I think it's very important we preserve our democracy, we do, our growing democracy. We do not get blinded by short-term gains. Professionals thinking they'll get work, thinking they'll get positions, and I ask, how many people can get positions in government? How many people can have contracts? Why don't we build a country where your own self-drive and industry will get you there? I think we have a collective duty. And I'm saying, yes, there is electoral fraud in Kenya which has to be addressed. And that electoral fraud is accompanied by impunity, which is also fueling corruption. And it is in that context that I actually said that the president and um, the leader of the opposition, Raila, and other stakeholders need to sit on a round table. I'm not proposing that the president and Raila sit together. The country is bigger than the two of them, than their political parties. If we are to sort this problem, we need all stakeholders round the table. The people who are opposed to your call for dialogue, these are yeah. the leaders, William Kafogo, ETC, they see that suggestion as an endorsement of a Nusumkate government. Is that I thought it? we made that statement with the William Kabogo and others. Yes, I'm saying uh, your statement, yes, those who are opposed to your statement with the, when you were with William Kabogo and all the other leaders. Yeah, what I say is this. You can't start being defensive that if we talk, there will be Nusumkate. So are you... you rem remember when there were demonstrations 
to kick out Isaac Hassan's IABC. Mm -hmm. The opposition and government then um, called. They sat down and came up with a bipartisan committee to amend the electoral laws. It was a mistake because that committee did not include other stakeholders. Whatever they agreed upon was not comprehensive enough to stop the electoral fraud. It was a short-term measure. And I am asking those who say that sitting down is a nusumukate, did they come up with nusumukate that time? We cannot. The Constitution encourages dialogue and a participatory approach to everything. Therefore, we must never be afraid to talk to each other because we fear it may result in a coalition. What if it resulted in a coalition? Power is a shared space. That's why the Constitution invites you as a citizen to participate in things that affect you. So just to be clear, are you su suggesting and a coalition to get us out of this crisis? But why would you ask me that? Merely because I have said people should sit down and uh, iron out issues. And you also, as a media person, confusing people and making them think that the only thing leaders can dialogue about is Nusumukate, Be while we know there are fundamental issues that need to be discussed. Because there's this false the equivalence that has been created that when you people talk, yeah. as that was the case in, 2000, after, in 2007 after the election, then yeah. it led to a coalition government. So in, in Kenya, dialogue has become code for negotiations to get into a coalition. How come then there was no coalition when code and Jubilee discussed the electoral laws? in a bipartisan committee. That's why I'm saying, as the media, please help educate. Don't criminalize All right. people sitting together and talking. Yeah. Let me take that tweet from uh, somebody on, who says, if you are offered a position by President Kenyatta, would you take it in no, government? No, I'm not interested in going into government. I would be interested in forming my own government in Kirinyaga. But if that is not available, I'm content to stay as a citizen, just the same way I remained after the 2013 elections. Again, the media and all of us must help Kenyans to understand that when you lose elections, it is not a must that you get space in government. Less than 5% of the population are employed by government. The rest are in the private sector or in their own little kiosks. We must be content to return wherever you came from before you vied. Go back there. So I'll be happy just to remain a citizen. I saw this comment from uh, Makweni Senator Mutula Kilonzo Jr. Yeah. Uh, commenting about your loss at the High Court today. It yeah. is unfortunate that Martha Karua's petition was struck out on technical issues. Yeah. During her time as Justice Minister, yeah. the judge would have been transferred to the last courthouse in Kuali. I think he is very wrong. Maybe that's what he would do himself if he was Justice Minister. I never participated in transfer of judges. I never interfered with the running of the courts at all. Yes. There's this common opinion by a lot yeah. of people, who, especially those who support NASA right now. Yeah. Um, this is Saudi Amonanchi. Martha Karua vehemently supported electoral theft against Raila and ODM, thinking that PNU would last forever. Now it has boomeranged badly on her. Truly corrupt power is fleeting. Let us start by saying theft against Raila. Who stole from who? Because Krigla is a fact found that there was ex exaggeration on the ODM side, exaggeration on PNU side. It were two thieves, one telling the other, you stole much more than me. Why? But you so just... let them stop having this. But Holier you... than thou that there was stolen victory. My support for Kebaki, and I told you once again, was a matter of choice. And as media, you should be educating people that choice is never wrong. It's just choice. The question is, did Martha Karua participate in any wrongdoing? How can going to KICC to be an agent be wrongdoing? You see? You just said that you it, believe President Kibaki won the election in 2007. But you're also quoting Krigler, who said it was impossible to tell who won the election. May because, I tell as you said, there's theft I believe, on both sides. What I believe, why I believe that way. There was um, an American uh, firm that audited the exaggeration by both sides. Their conclusion was that if you remove the exaggeration on both sides, Kibaki would have still won with 150,000.
I, st I bow down to Krieglas report that both sides committed electoral irregularities. It's therefore wrong for ODM to continue claiming their victory was stolen. Because if we start from a lie, we will never be able to solve the problem. It is also wrong for any Kenyan, and especially those also in opposition zones, knowing very well that they stole from each other on the opposition zones, and that's why they are petition, to keep on saying that only Jubilee stole from them. Once we admit that electoral fraud is widespread in Kenya by both sides of the divide, we will be 50% towards solving the problem. I actually feel that if we really wanted to get to the bottom of the matter, as Kenyans now and after the petitions are over in six months, we should form a consortium, open all the ballot boxes for 8th of August. We'll be able then to know how widespread is electoral fraud, and then we can be able to solve and move forward. We don't want to get to where Zimbabwe is today. Therefore, we need to address and strengthen our growing democracy. The moment we find ourselves in, I want to take you back to yeah. 29th December is what we were just showing there. But a few days later, I think it was on 11th January 2008, yeah. this was James Orengo yeah. in Parliament. Yeah. This is what he said about the election then when he refused to swear by uh, President Kibaki's name yeah. as MP. Watch. I, am, I want to put this very boldly, very, very boldly, that in the eyes of the people of Kenya, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Israela Amolo Odinga. In, in the eyes of the Electoral Commission, in the words of the chairman of that commission, he does not know who the President of the Republic of Kenya is. Honorable Mwai Kibaki lost elections by nearly half a million votes. I don't know. And we have to swear allegiance to the President. Then this House is being put in a very difficult position because there is contestation as to who is the President of the Republic of Kenya. I know that the only member for Thai is sitting in the uh, state or uh, seat of state, which is on the right hand of the Speaker. But so long as there is contestation on the seat of the presidency, that is a matter which this House must resolve expeditiously. It cannot, it cannot wait. What is your reaction to that? That is why we have in our constitution the period within which a presidential petition must be resolved so that the swearing in occurs. It was informed by that contest. Mm -hmm. Swearing in must occur when the doubts have been removed. It's not so for the office of governor. So Anwe Guru is enjoying being governor and those, all those others who have a contest. But for the presidency, because it's very important, that is why we have filing within seven days, hearing and determination within 14 days, because the country cannot be kept in paralysis. But I must tell you that eventually Orengo swore the allegiance because he had to swear the oath. Even Ababu Namwambo, who had refused, mm -hmm. eventually had to swear. Otherwise, they would have lost their seats. This argument has come back again now yeah. because the NASA believes that President Kenyatta is not validly elected and therefore they don't recognize him. But they still went to parliament when he summoned. They swore. That doesn't mean they have taken away their contestation. It's a procedural thing. Yeah, so that's the way it is. But for me, the route is to follow the institutions that are laid down. I'm aggrieved. I go to court. And that's why I went to court. Yes. There's a, 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 an, an, an analogy being made here, which I, I don't know what your reaction would be to. Adonija yeah. Otieno says, yeah. if Martha Karua believes Mwai Kibaki won the 2007 elections, then I know a guru won Kirinyaga governor seat fair and square. She should move on. I will still, I still have my legal process to exhaust. That is the view, their view. And I want to remind him that in 2007, I was telling ODM to go to court. And I have again said, I practice what I preach. I'm aggrieved I've gone to court. We cannot strengthen our institutions when we are not respecting them and allowing them to work. After the Supreme Court 
overthrew the last election. Yeah. NASA withdrew from the, the fresh election because they believed the commission had issues. Yeah. What is your take on, because you're also saying there's electoral fraud and your first yeah. respondent in your case is the IABC. Was the IABC as currently constituted in a position to hold the fresh election, in your view, a credible election? Yes, but they needed to do certain things. And uh, if you look, go to my Twitter handle, I was saying from the outset, the moment they set the election date, I said they need to call the parties on the table to agree on how to proceed, not to take over their work, but everybody to play their concerns on the table so that the IABC can um, address them. And they actually tried, but the parties never met. Each was going their own time. I do not want to say anything because the process is ongoing. But it is the duty, you know, if electoral fraud is alleged and a by-election is called in Kirinyaga, I would expect that uh, there is one or two things I might be wanting the IDBC to address. One of the things you've mentioned is electoral fraud. Yeah. The NASA believes there was widespread electoral fraud, and many of the elected leaders, Raila Odinga has called them Vifaranga via computer, so that they don't deserve to be in office, and that's why they refuse to recognize this process. I'm talking about the area I know mm -hmm. where my election, mm -hmm. the gubernatorial election. If you go to Kisumu, um, the former governor, Ranguma, is talking about his area. Yes. You go to Mombasa, Kazungu Kambi will be talking about his area. So each person, and that tells you, yes, there was widespread uh, fraud in many places represented by those petitions. Until those petitions are disposed of, we will never know. And that's why the Constitution has clearly stated in Article 159, sub Article 2, that justice should not be sacrificed at the altar of technicalities. Because then, it will serve no purpose. If cases will be defeated on technicalities, not on merit, and the questions remain, is sweeping the dirt under the carpet. Before the new, this constitution, the 2010 constitution, striking out cases on basis of technicalities, and especially in the highest court that time, in the Court of Appeal, was the order of the day. That changed. The jurisprudence has now changed. There are still those who are uh, viewing the, the provisions of the law from a narrow point of view and are still striking out petitions. But overwhelmingly, the jurisprudence is changing. And it's up to us to develop it. How else can we develop it if there is no Martha Karoa and the next person taking their grievances to court and going on appeal if they don't feel satisfied? I'm doing my duty as a citizen. President Kenyatta, the same candidate you supported, called yeah. Maraga and his Wakorawaki just after the Supreme Court overturned his election. He has explained himself, and I will not be his spokesperson, because I'm not. I'm not going to go into that. That did not make you review your support of the president? Let me say that I didn't review, and I still supported him. Yeah. Whether I agree with it or not is a different matter. Yeah. In court, in law, we say we differ with respect. That's even t why today, when I was telling the court that there are some things I've noticed, I said it's doubts I have in my mind, and I'm asking the question. I did not go out and accuse, because that's a different process altogether. Yeah. You're still a practicing lawyer. He yeah. is concerned about the conduct of judges, and he has said we shall revisit yeah. after this is over. People see that as intimidation of the judiciary, which is an independent arm of government. Intimidation of the judiciary is not acceptable in any civilized nation. But as I said, the president explained himself. So I don't want to go beyond that. He did not explain the bit about revisit, so that might still be um, a looming threat if his election is upheld. I do not know to what bit he explained. As far as I'm concerned, I had a general statement and I thought he explained himself. Yeah. And his initial statement was very laudable. He said he doesn't agree with the judges, but you respect it. Mm -hmm. The end result, they actually respected the decision because they submitted to the election. I will leave it at that. Remember, the same parties are before the court. We ought not to go beyond that. Fair enough.
On yes. the, the converse, is NASA says, regardless of the outcome of this court, in which this time they're not petitioners in the Supreme Court, but they're setting up people's assemblies as an alternate way of ensuring they have a legitimate presidency yeah. because they don't recognize the presidency of Uhuru Kenyatta. What is your view on that? Uh, before I answer that, I've just remembered that uh, even uh, the principles, some of the principles on the NASA side have had occasion to make very harsh statements, what would be seen as intimidation yes. of the court, including in the start of that petition. Right. So I think as a nation and as leaders, we must try to build a culture of respecting our institutions, even when we disagree. As for the formation of uh, uh, people's assemblies, they have a right to do that, but that doesn't change the position as to who is the legitimate leader of the country. It is the court which will decide on that. But because we all have a right to assemble, and those are independent, uh, semi-autonomous entities, the county assemblies, they can make their resolutions. And I know that as many as support Uhuru Kenyatta will also be making, uh, you know, affirming whatever and i'm saying it's not healthy for a nation to stay with a standoff the standoff may legally not overthrow the presidency of president kenyatta but we need to release the energies of this nation for development we have stayed in an uncertainty since august 8 and it's hurting everybody not one side i think as people who belong to the same nation and are going to belong to the same nation, we need to start talking to each other to see what we can do to make it better. And I've had occasion to say, and I want to reiterate here, when you win the presidency, you still need the people you govern, even those who opposed you are part of the people you govern. When you win as governor or as MP, that doesn't give you exclusive rights over that area, you still have to have discourse with the people you are serving. So it makes sense to me for our leadership to sit down and invite other stakeholders. Let's have a national dialogue. We are a young democracy. We need to strengthen the way we relate to each other. We need to redefine the way we handle power. And the Constitution makes power a shared space. That's why even an MP spending CDF needs to go around the constituency talking to the people. That's why a governor with a budget needs to hold hearings to know what the people want to prioritize. And that is why even the national government, with all its power, has to do public forums so that people can speak out. So why are we criminalizing sitting down and talking? Let us talk. Let's the, reason together. The reason why dialogue is tricky is mm -hmm. because the two parties can't even agree on what they should talk about. Raila Odinga says the only dialogue he's willing to have with President Kenyatta and Jubilee is about how to hold f credible polls within 90 days. On the other hand, the Jubilee side and President Kenyatta have said the only dialogue they're willing to get into is after this whole process is done. He is sworn in and like they, could, they will talk with any other Kenyan. I have said that a talk between the two sides would not be useful without other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And when people are fighting, there will be a standoff. But when you sit down and you begin talking, all those grand standings are forgotten. Mm -hmm. When we got to negotiating the national accord, initially we could not even shake hands. At the end of it, after shouting at each other across the table, we started behaving the way we should, like people who actually knew each other and who belong to the same nation. And that's how come, even with all the disagreements, the coalition government was able to last until the end. Look at the parties. At one time, William Ruto was a right-hand man of Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. At one time, Kalonzo Musioka was a right-hand man and the VP of uh, Mwai Kibaki, mm -hmm. and they were at that time, we were on the same side with Uhuru Kenyatta. So who doesn't know the other here? They have worked together. And for the protagonists at this time, all of them have been in Kanu together. So they know each other pretty well. And behind the scenes, when there is no standoff, national standoff like now, their buddies hugging and calling each other brother. Mm -hmm. 
So what's so strange about sitting down to talk? Yeah. All right. A lot of people are commenting on all of the things you've said today. I, I want to try and get through some of them. Enoch says, Martha Caro is learning how fraudulent the system in is when you're not in it. It now makes sense to her. A change is needed. I learned a long time ago, and that's why I resigned. So it's him who is learning me late. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's... You forget that I quit government after one year. Why the did coalition you, government. You quit the many coalition things, government famously. Many things, and I'm not going to revisit them. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, this is Kenyan Almighty. Mm. Martha Caro is a smart woman. She's very content. She's a type of leader that this country needs. Objective, feature-oriented, and a true patriot. All the best in your endeavors. Ling long live the Iron Lady. Thank you. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm getting the, the right tone. It's, okay. it's not all the, it's all, okay. only the negative tweets. It's okay. Rion Cielos. I love Martha Karua. She speaks her mind. She was snatched her victory. Mama Karua, go for your right. Thank you. Okay. Um, somebody's quoting your intimidation to the judiciary in civilized nation is not allowed. And to be fair, Raila Odinga also told the judiciary they have a chance to redeem themselves yeah. when, the new, with the new, uh, when they went to the Supreme Court. Yeah. So it's not something that's unique to, to Jubilee. I thought I must mention that to balance because the parties are in court again mm -hmm. and we must be very careful. Yeah. All right. When, let's, let's do scenarios here. Yeah. Scenario one, President Kenyatta's election is upheld and he is sworn in, becomes the next president. Yeah. We will still have a crisis. Is dialogue for you the only way out of it? I think, let's assume it's upheld, there's a swearing in. Mm -hmm. You see, we still have, you can't dismiss your uh, competition because they also are part of the people you govern. They need to sit down. And I think President Kenyatta recognizes this because he's on record as saying that he will, and, uh, he will be ready to sit down after he's sworn in. Right. Yeah. Scenario two, mm. his election is uh, not upheld. It's annulled one more time. And can this country survive another election? I don't want to comment on that because then we'll be preempting what the court will say. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me say this, that um, we are all fatigued by this sort of uncertainty and people are praying and hoping. But it's up to the court to weigh the facts before it and act in accordance with the law. Somebody is taking issue with you. Laurent Mboya says, Martha Kero is no different. Speaking from both ends of her mouth in the name of favors. In the name of favors? Favors, yes. I think that's a very mistaken view. He's entitled to his view, however warped. <laughs> 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 All right, fair enough. In conclusion, now I, I want to just uh, figure out, you are somebody who has worked or uh, has uh, been affiliated with Raila Odinga, at least during those court days. Yeah. And I still have respect for him. Just not respect enough to support him. Listen, supporting is choice, mm -hmm. you see? And you look at the formation, you look at the entirety, not just Raila, but the whole formation. And what is eating both sides is the disorganization that accompanies both camps. And I'll not go beyond that. And therefore, when people make choices, you're making because of very many things, not because you don't respect. Chomba West, yeah. Martha Karua, what do you think about secession? I think it's, uh, it's not a solution. And I actually said today that those calls that are calling for 40 counties to go one way and six, 41 one way and six the other, mm -hmm. it actually to me is like hate speech against the six. What have the residents of those counties done to you that you feel they do not deserve? You may have an issue with their leadership, but surely you cannot condemn the entire. Just the same way, anybody who says, and there, there is one commentator who talked of the Luo Nation mm -hmm. telling them to secede and go to Uganda, that's hate speech. You may not like a leader from the Luo community, but you cannot demonize the entire. Let us avoid, as Kenyans, visiting the issues you have with leaders on whole communities. That's profiling. The average person in any part of Kenya today is suffering just like the average person in the other side. People are sleeping hungry all over the nation. People have suffered when there was 
the strike by the medical personnel. Mm -hmm. People are, su are suffering joblessness everywhere in the country. We all have similar issues. Look at governors calling for cessation. Governor Be Amazon King and even, um, before you even Hassan account Jogo. to your people what you have done. Because if they are being oppressed by the national government, aren't you oppressing them yourself if you have not been able to do something substantial to them? Unless if you can show your card and show that you have done better, you have not wasted funds, all you are seeking is to replace one bad leader with another, the way we did the colonial government. You don't think some of those talking about secession have genuine concerns about historical economic exclusion? which is manifested in a political way. This constitution is supposed to address that. And I am very proud to have introduced the Equalization Fund when we were in Naivasha. I borrowed it from the Canadian constitution. If that clause is utilized well, and serious funds put into it, not 10 billion, we are talking of hundreds of billions to address years of marginalization. And if we get good governance in the counties, Leadership in the counties that is seriously thinking of uplift, uplifting the lives of the people, and we've seen a few governors doing some of those things, then we'll end marginalization. Right now, within the new framework, we can end marginalization. And the Council of Governors sits in the summit with the president, and they can be able to ask the presidency to put real money Real money, not little money, not 10 billion, you know, when we need roads. Some of the insecurity we are suffering in those large, large constituencies is because of bad, poor infrastructure. So we have a framework to address marginalization right now. Let's utilize it. Those who oppose secession see it as treason. You've called it hate speech. Is it treason? I don't want to go into that. But I'm saying, when you tell me, because I'm from Mount Kenya, that you have a Republic of Kenya with everybody else, but you're excluding me, it's hate speech. Don't because you're profiling me. You see, if they were saying, let my county secede, how did they arrive at the 49, the 41? And if it's about who is in leadership, William Ruto is the deputy president. How come the Rift Valley is not excluded? You can see we are going back to where we were in 2007, 41 against. This is hate speech. Don't That's people have a it. right to self-determination using what the Constitution allows? You can. You can agitate for it in a different way that doesn't profile. And you can invite those who are willing to come with you to say they are willing to come. I have not known of any caucus where people elected so that you single out Actually, they even forgot Meru. Meru is not included. They, they single out six uh, of the counties in Mount Kenya and take the other 40. They are profiling Mount Kenya. And profiling is wrong, whether from the opposition or from the government. Yeah. What is your current relationship with Raila Odinga? Cordial. They are my friends. Just like the president is my friend. And other people in Jubilee, and also many other people in Cod are my friends. These are people we have worked together. Somebody noticed an inconsistency in what you said. Martha Karua is funny. Martin Tyro says, if Larry asks about, suggests the Supreme Court upholding Huru win, she can discuss and give an opinion. If he suggests the nullification, she says it's prejudicial and she cannot discuss. No, I, I think I've balanced it. Maybe he didn't hear what I said, but I have not discussed anything that is before the court. Right. Yeah. Okay, finally, this is uh, from, uh, I think it's Captain Tony Muredi. Mm. He says, I come from Kagio in Kirinyaga County, and Martha Karo is a great leader who I highly regard and respect. However, I kindly request her to support Anwe Guru to move Kirinyaga forward. Enough of legal battles. Allow me my freedom of choice. I'm filing an appeal tomorrow, sorry. And I will exhaust my legal right to the end. She's already enjoying the incumbency. So how have I stopped her from going on with development? Allow me my space. Yeah. Martha Karua, thank you so much for coming yeah. on tonight. Yeah. We appreciate your time. All Very the best well. in your appeal.
hopefully that's not taking aside. I want to wish everybody the best. And all the best for Kenya, our country. Mm -hmm. Let us support our country by supporting constructive engagement so that we move forward. All right. Yes. Excellent. We're going to leave it there. Thank mm -hmm. you so much one, one more time. Thank you. And most of all, thank you for watching. My name is Larry Mito. We're back next week on Wednesday at 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Our 8 p.m. show today is a fun story. I need to give you some background on this. We did not prepare a show because we assumed the Supreme Court would take over our time at 8 p.m., right? So we said, okay, fine. The judges have things to say. The lawyers have things to say. We will not do a show. And our show usually begins at 8. What happened tonight? At 8 or 1 p.m., the, the Supreme Court adjourned and we had no show prepared. So, um, the joys of broadcast. Next week we'll have a show at 8 p.m., I promise you. Thank you for watching. Good night.